Hello everyone, welcome to the Win at Work podcast. You're with your host Julian Leahy and today I'm joined by the fantastic Carissa Carbon from Denver, Colorado. Welcome to the show, Carissa. Hi Julian, thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. And just as a little uh, joke for Australian listeners, I keep calling Carissa Claudia Carvan for some reason, but um, even looks similar to the, uh, the famous Australian actress. Now, Carissa, we're going to talk about disillusionment <laughs> and uh, in, lead, in leadership and the people that you work with. And sometimes people work very hard to get to a certain point and they have some success and then all of a sudden they sort of hit a plateau um, and perhaps they're feeling like, this is not right. Um, what do I do now? There, there's gotta be more. Would you say that's an a- accurate summary of uh, the you know some of the problems that people face that you work with? Yes, absolutely. You know, those leaders who say, I've reached these limits of what I'm quote unquote supposed to do or what I should be doing as a leader. There's got to be something more that I'm not tapping into. And when they're ready to sort of go inward to say, okay, maybe it's not everybody outside of me. Maybe I can go inward to get those answers that I've been missing. It's interesting, um, you know, because I I don't know why, but I was thinking about this recently and um, it's, Sometimes I think the people that feel this way, they, they're they sort of driven by something else, maybe you know, pro- proving people wrong, and they feel sometimes that they need to change who they are um, to be the person that they wanna be. And um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like uh, maybe they need to be dealing with something else that's inside them and maybe accepting who they are and all of their failings. Would, would the sort of perfectionism and um, any of that sort of strike a chord with you with some of the issues that you deal with? Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I phrase it a little bit differently, though. When people come to me and they say, I need to change who I am, what I do is I work with people to realize that every single human being is incredibly magic and unique. And what you have is such a beautiful gift inside of you, and you have Uh, essentially a wellspring of information about who you are and who you're meant to be in this world. So rather than saying we need to change who we are, instead, it's really about peeling back those layers of who we're not. So to your point, right, if we say we have to prove something, we need to prove people wrong or we're out to prove something. Oftentimes I I work with leaders and we start to go backwards in their lives and we say, oh, well, this notion of feeling like you have something to prove is actually something you picked up as a child based on your upbringing, based on the messages that you received from parents, teachers, grandparents, any authority figure, people that we look up to who we trust, we expect to protect us, we expect to show us how to live in the world. So as children, we pick up these rudimentary stories. We internalize these beliefs about ourselves to, for instance, I have to accomplish in order to be worthy or in order to earn love. And so it's not about changing fundamentally who they are, but rather removing those layers of armor, those layers of protection that we've created for ourselves to protect us from fear and pain. So it's just removing those layers of who we're not to become who we truly are. Yes. And, um, you know, so many people have these, um, I guess, small traumas, some people have bigger traumas. And I always think that sometimes it's trauma that is kind of compelling people. And it's very, um, the people that end up feeling disillusioned and and, um, what do I do next? It's, it's, you know, because they haven't sort of dealt with with that, which is, which is, you know, it's sad. Um, And um, yeah, so what do you do, you know, when people come to you and sort of, what type of business people do you work with? I tend to work primarily with corporate leaders. I've spent over a decade in the corporate environment, and I think that is an area that needs some serious attention. And we have a lot of opportunities to really bring leadership into the 21st century. Many of our leadership practices were created and have been used since the Industrial Revolution when we, we were on the manufacturing line, right, where a leader didn't need to care about our emotional well-being as employees, didn't need to invest in who we were as people. And so a lot of these outdated leadership practices are still in play today. 
And that's where I think this disillusionment happens where leaders say, wait a second, I'm looking at what I've been told and how to lead effectively. Something's not working, right? For instance, if we go back to the Industrial Revolution, bosses, managers had visual uh, access to their employees, right? Empl managers could see, okay, here's who's on the assembly line. Here's who's hitting their targets. Here's who's not. You didn't need to build a lot of trust, for instance. But today, where many people, especially through the COVID-19 pandemic, are now working autonomously, working remotely, now leaders who are saying, you know, I've never invested in building trust with my employees, so I'm not leading effectively in this new remote environment. So they come to me and say, I'm not really able to build trust with my employees, and I don't know why. So as we start to work together in that coaching container, we start to peel back those layers and we realize it's because that leader has never trusted themselves. They have been using <clears throat> external guidance, advice from parents, from mentors, whoever it is. They've never learned to trust their own internal voice. And so I believe through the coaching that I provide and the work that I've been doing, I believe that we can only trust others and we can only build trust with others as much as we've built trust within ourselves. And so everything outside of us, is sort of this representation or this consequence of the world internal to us, if that makes sense. It sounds to me like you're talking about kind of men, and I, I really, that's how I think about this, because um, in these environments that I've, I've worked in, uh, where there's a lot of kind of that real, I guess you'd call it toxic masculinity, almost like, um, yep. you know, aggressive, uh, go-getter, type thing and um it's been there's been a real shift and people don't want that type of leadership anymore um w would you say that people are more open to um learning some of these softer approaches i guess and um do you work primarily with men and um uh, or do do you find that women have some of these issues as well you know, I think all of us have these issues. We're all human beings. We all end up having adverse experiences as children, whether to your point earlier, whether it's that kind of little T trauma, big T trauma, we're all creating these stories in our minds. I will say that <clears throat> by and large, it is women who tend to seek out coaching, uh, oftentimes because of this kind of growth mindset, this expectation to continue evolving but oftentimes the message that we give to young boys who become those male leaders, right, is it's not okay to show emotion. You have to be action oriented. You have to be a, a quote unquote, a man or a leader. So this toxic masculinity sort of trope, I believe is really holding us back. But I don't go to any particular male leader and say, it's your fault right? This is really the water that we're swimming in. This is the conditioning that we've undergone. So when we think about leadership coaching, this is where I think it's so important to recognize the tremendous benefits as leaders. Oftentimes people might say, oh, I want to get leadership coaching because I want to more effectively lead through other people. But when let's say a male leader comes to me and they're kind of, they have that outward focus, they say, something's not working. I want to build trust with my people. I want to be able to delegate. I want to lead effectively on my team. We start to go inward and we start to realize all the ways that that particular man has not been able to express himself, has not been safe to feel his emotions and to allow those emotions to move through him. So there is a lot of work that men can do that's available to men. And I believe that, especially with my focus on leadership, we know that in today's hierarchical, patriarchal society, many leadership positions are held by men. So I do believe there's a huge opportunity for men to do this work. But I think that all human beings have the opportunity to go inward, to get to know ourselves better, to come home to ourselves so that we can go out into the world without reacting to those emotional triggers as quickly, without trying to control other people. There's a beautiful opportunity here for everybody. Yeah, it's really important to uh, get coaching, I think, a as much as you can. And um, because you always will fall back into habits. And um, I always find that, you know, when you talk to somebody and, and they just can tell you, they can see the things that you're doing that you don't even realize yourself. 
and when you um, have somebody regular that, that it just helps helps so much and it helps you just quickly deal with stuff that is there that you just you just don't deal with and, and it's just like bang go and then you feel better and um, and you're more effective um, so what do people do what's the first step of interacting with you Carissa well you know I think so much of it is curiosity it really starts with curiosity that willingness to say or ask ourselves you know what, why, why do I believe the things that I believe? Why have I come to show up the way that I show up? So it's really about increasing self-awareness and having that courage and curiosity to go inward, to get to know ourselves better. When for uh, most of us, that can be uncharted territory. It feels really scary. You know, one of the examples I use is our thoughts become these patterns. As you mentioned, we can slip into old patterns. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that if we think about the brain, we create what I call neural superhighways. The thought patterns that we repeat become very familiar, become very comfortable, and essentially become a well-worn path in our brains that feel like a superhighway. We've got eight lanes of traffic, you know, going in every direction. This is the path that we tend to travel. So the notion of going inward when we haven't been encouraged and we don't have the tools to do so can feel incredibly intimidating and scary. It can almost feel like taking this well-lit, well-paved superhighway and intentionally taking that exit to go down the dirt road that is unlit, unpaved, and unfamiliar. So it can be really scary. So a lot of uh, what we need to enter into a true coaching container is cur courage and curiosity. Courage and curiosity, awesome. And um, and 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 you, what do people do? Do they do they have like a you know a thirty-minute coaching call with you is that what they do and then you just work out what to do from there so we tend to we tend to meet for about an hour we really like to be able to go a little bit deeper you know 30 minutes we just start scratching the surface so essentially a typical coaching call might look like let's say someone we've been working together for a few sessions we've established you know who they are their goals through coaching what are those outcomes they're really looking to achieve and what is standing in their way? Where, where are the ways that they hold themselves back? So essentially a, a typical coaching call, if we've created that foundation and we're kind of diving in, it really involves as a coach, I am a mirror. So this is where coaching, you know, people say, oh, I've got friends I can go to for advice. I've got friends who will listen to me. I don't really need a coach. Well, as a coach, I've been trained to hold up a mirror and to essentially be a vessel for you to explore yourself as much as possible, I'm doing my best to leave my biases, my assumptions, my judgments, my perspective aside, and really show up using the tools where I'm asking you powerful questions. You might say, I learned to believe this about myself, but you've never taken it any further. So I say, when was the first time you felt that way? Who was the first person that told you to believe this or that you were a certain type of way? So I'm really asking those questions to invite people to go deeper within themselves in ways that maybe they just haven't or they haven't had the tools to do so. So as people are kind of exploring, talking through what might be challenging them, where they feel stuck as we're exploring the root cause of that, then we start to move into, okay, now that we've identified the cause, what are we going to do about it? So we create custom journal prompts, exercises, actions that people can take, usually generated by the coaching client, because we know that that is the most sustainable method of change is when it's intrinsically motivated. So I, as a coach, I wouldn't tell you, hey, Julian, you need to do X, Y, Z to really overcome your own challenges. I might say to you, hey, Julian, so what are you committed to doing? What actions are you committed to in order to let this go or to overcome this challenge. And so you're coming up with those actions yourself. So this is not handholding necessarily. It's really about being in a container of safety, trust, and vulnerability for you to understand what it feels like to go inward, to trust your intuition, to know that you have the answers inside of you. And it's not about somebody else telling you what to do. Awesome. And um, what percentage of uh, people do you see uh, personally versus off, you know, uh, Zooms and all that stuff? Do you, do, you, do you have a split there? 
Right now I do uh, almost entirely virtual coaching. I do have a couple of folks I meet with in person occasionally, um, but mostly virtual 100%. It allows me to connect with people in different parts of the world, different parts of the U.S., um, all over. So really, I'm really committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. I want things to be as fair and accessible as possible. So I really enjoy being able to do virtual coaching. But for anyone who's in the Denver area, I also love to meet up in person. Yeah, it's so much more efficient as well because um, you could just jump on there and uh, bang, bang, get it done. You don't have to jump in the car and <laughs> drive out there. And you've got something happening in January. Do you want to tell us about your retreat, Carissa? Next year. Oh, you know, that that was actually this past year. Um, oh. uh, you know, I, I don't have any retreats on the calendar right now. I actually just about a month ago um, co-hosted a women's retreat in Park City, Utah, which was really incredible. It was three days of really structured, intimate, connected time, a lot of different modalities that women hadn't explored. So we had breath work, meditation, cold plunging, sound healing, in addition to really powerful coaching sessions. So for instance, uh, one of the things we really talked about at this retreat was learning to recognize the conditioning, learning to recognize the water we're swimming in, so to speak, because um, that can be a really powerful tool. We tend to believe that the voice in our heads is true and accurate because it's the voice in our head. But once we start to realize those external influences, we start to say, oh, the reason I believe this about myself is because I've been conditioned to believe that, let's say in my case, women are a certain way or are not a certain way. Um, just using a specific example from my own life, I tend to be a very assertive personality, which defies expected gender stereotypes, uh, especially in the U.S., but I think especially in the Western world, women are expected to be more of that quiet, you know, community building, seen and not heard. You know, these are sort of the outdated stereotypes that we have about women. So for a very long time, I made myself wrong. I told myself I'm too much. This isn't good. There's something wrong with me because I naturally have an assertive, outspoken personality. But as I've been doing my own internal work, I realized it's not me that's wrong. It's the conditioning. It's the message that I've been absorbing my entire life that's wrong. Yes, I love it when, um, and what happens is when women are like that, um, it starts out, everyone's like, oh my God, she's, she's you know, whatever. And mm -hmm. um, Yep, but, exactly but, what you're thinking, yep. <laughs> but but then, then they get respected and um, uh, they still get resistance, I find, uh, from, you know, alpha male types in the world but um yeah I, I think it's great um i've worked with women like that that just come in and just uh, kick butt and it uh, doesn't take long for them to um actually all everyone shuts up all the dinosaurs and uh let them <laughs> let them do their thing which is great um that's well awesome. you know what's really what's really interesting about that julian is the fact that when i look back at my own career right when i was showing up really assertively or aggressively you know those, those adjectives that were used to describe me i realized that it, my imposter syndrome my insecurities fueled me to show up in a way where i was concerned about myself i was constantly thinking what are people going to think about me how am i going to be how do i advance my career and so when I got negative feedback, I could have easily just said, oh, that's because they're dinosaurs, right? They're not open-minded. They're not comfortable with an assertive, confident woman. But as I started to turn that lens inward and I started to go inside myself, I realized, well, it's because of my insecurities. I'm not actually showing up fully authentically. So while these natural parts of my personality are coming through, I'm not channeling them. I'm not using them in a way that really creates connection that shows up in service of others. So I easily could have just blamed gender stereotypes or, you know, men who were closed minded, but it was that courage and that curiosity that I had to go inward within myself where I said, Oh, these are natural parts of me and how I'm showing up isn't really showing up in service. It's not serving me and it's not serving others. So I get to unlearn those parts of myself and accept who I am so that now when I show up really authentically, I can be as outspoken and confident, but I'm not doing it because I'm worried about 
someone discovering that I don't belong or I'm fully authentic and confident in who I am. And so now how people perceive me is very, very different. Yes, isn't it great when you no longer care what people think of you and uh, you just let it rip and um, it, it took some uh, honesty on your behalf as well because um, like you said, there was an opportunity there to um, to blame blame everybody else but yep. um, yeah, you were able to say, no, actually part of what I'm doing is wrong. I'm going to fix that and then I'm just going to be myself. That's awesome, Carissa. I'm going to uh, wrap this one up. If you want to get in touch with Carissa, um, to, you will see her website is her, her name, uh, carissacarbon.com, and uh, you can follow her and see what she's doing. And I hope you've got another um, retreat coming up because that looks so awesome where you had all the hiking and stuff. Uh, like that would be something you go and you go, wow, that was amazing when you have all those experiential uh, experiences, I guess, with it. Yeah, absolutely. The women who attended the most recent retreat we did, uh, they all walked away saying that it was life changing for them. Yeah, yeah. I love stuff like that where uh, you, you do all that unexpected stuff and um, get yourself uncomfortable. All right. Wonderful. Thanks absolutely. for coming Thanks. on, Chris. That was really fantastic. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up and uh, I'll see you very soon on another episode. Thanks, everyone, for watching and listening. Bye.